This is a, a new um, quad uh, Yagi I built to um, try and improve my uh, contact with uh, Neil VK3KAL in Alexandra. I've been using the uh, X200 signal strength about one. So I built this little uh, four element quad W6T wide design and yes we've got a small improvement of, a, of about two or three dB. There it is there. At the moment it's set for vertical but Neil was using horizontal so I'm going to uh, bring it down and rotate it. In the, this is the, my mast. You'll see there's a, uh, a bearing there. That bearing gets lifted up and there's a uh, piece of tubing that comes out. It gets lifted up, it's called the swinging gate. And the whole mast tubing is then rotates on a pivot around here there it is there and using the winch we just simply wind the whole uh, tubing down to ground level or near ground level there's the winch and we can work on the mast and attach the um, do whatever we need to do to the antenna uh, this antenna is uh, for use on 144 megs and the contact was uh, is on 144.190 thereabouts on single sideband. So this is the, um, uh, you'll see the feed point here. I'm going to rotate the boom so that the feed point is now at the bottom. That'll change it from vertical polarization to horizontal polarization. So now I'm going to uh, uh, lift the swinging gate so that I can uh, uh, lower the 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 center boom uh, uh, the center uh, pole section. Uh, so I have a pole. I'm just going to go over and uh, lift that uh, swinging gate up. So the gate is now opened. So now we loosen the pivot section. There's a screw here at the back. This will allow this whole mast to swing around on this bar. And this particular knob will allow me to lift the mast section and get the bearing over the top of a support beam. So we'll now uh, lift it up, see what happens. We release the winch a little bit. Give us a bit of room on the winch so the cable's loose push this up and this folds out and now with the winch we can start to bring him down and bring it across and we hold it there we've got the cables catching on a bolt so we make sure they're out of the way okay so now we can uh, start to winch him down so I'll give you another view so now I'll uh, start winching down. Hopefully. So uh, there's a view of the um, the quad and the vertical. Now I can uh, go over and uh, rotate the boom on that quad so that it becomes a horizontal beam. So while we're here at ground level, this is the feed point of the quad. It's the driven element. This is the reflector. This green bit of uh, heat shrink is over some copper tape, 50 mil copper tape, wound around to form a bazooka. The bazooka joins the braid there, but it doesn't touch anything up at this end. So this converts it from a balanced feed to an unbalanced feed. Um, up the top here, you'll see a, a similar ballon or another ballon used for the X200. 
which I'll just show you. This is the uh, bellum I'm using on the X200, which uh, comes out of the instructions for mounting that antenna. Here you see the bracket that I'm using to hold this um, quad. So I'm just going to undo these bolts. The way this thing's just got some uh, zip ties here. Just uh, undo that one. And we'll undo those two bolts. And that uh, means I can then rotate the, um, the, mark, the, uh, the boom, which is a bit of wood. I'm going to put some paint on it in a minute after this. Uh, put some spray paint on it. These are uh, locking stainless steel 8mm nuts. I like to put something like that on. And then there's some uh, again, fully uh, zinc galvanised bolts holding this wooden boom to this plate, which is bolted with two U bolts to this aluminium um, mast, 3mm uh, thick. So, Undo these, two of those, and then the uh, is clear. We undo the connection here, which is going to have some tape put around it, some self amalgamating tape when I'm happy. The whole thing, the SWR is 1.2 to 1 on 146.0, and 2 to 1 down on 144.1. So there we go, we've now released this. I'll now go and take this to the, sh uh, to the shop, up into the workshop, and I'll put some spray paint on it, just to protect it. We're giving it a bit of paint, so uh, a little bit wet still, doesn't matter. We'll uh, bolt this back up. We've now got the, um, the driven element uh, feed point down the bottom. So tighten these up. So there's the uh, driven element down the bottom and the bazooka has been uh, unzipped from the mast while the paint dries, just sitting there at the moment. So nearly there, the um, stainless steel lock nuts back now. Won't come off, uh, hopefully, with them. So we're nearly uh, there now. So I can uh, just put some tape around the connectors themselves so that uh, it's been protected from the weather and I will uh, raise the whole thing. So here I've got some Neato amalgamating um, tape. So I'll just uh, wrap some of that around this thing and see how we go. Quite good stuff, actually. Once you've got it on, it, um, it goes all gooey and stops the weather getting in. So it's already amalgamated to itself, as you can see here. So I haven't used it for a while. Anyway, we're back in the uh, good bit now. So we might do another layer here. Okay, it's really, if you want the antenna to keep working, this, uh, you need something like this on, the, uh, on your connectors. If you don't do that, uh, six months time, and particularly here in Montaggy, which is very salty, you, um, your connection starts to become unreliable. The uh, 80 meter, 40 meter track dive path. Turn it up as a vertical. All So now I'll um, 
lift the mast up a little bit and get the bearing over the support bracket. So put a bit of slack on the uh, winch wire. Make sure this is loose. And we need to push him back. See, in there. And just pull the winch tight. That pulls the bearing, that pulls the bearing back against the uh, pulley system up there. Now we can tighten the, uh, the swinging uh, bit down here. So now I'll go and rotate it in the right direction. So as you can see here the uh, swinging gate's now in place. Um, there's a bearing up there and I can rotate the whole mast from the uh, down the bottom there. Uh, I've now um, rotated the beam towards the speaker. That's the vertical, the X200, and that's the beam. I've just picked it up for maximum signal, uh, which is an interesting um, uh, little test, that one. Uh, just some quick comparisons. Here's Mount Borbor. I'll uh, transmit on the vertical and switch straight away over to the quad on receive. Quad. That's the quad. Vertical. Alinda. Vertical. And quad. Uh, Bass Hill. Vertical. Quad. Not much difference between those two. That's the quad. And that's the vertical. Uh, here's Geelong on the vertical. And on the quad, zilch, nothing. Uh, here's Mount Tassie, vertical and quad. Vertical and quad. Uh, during this test I did not rotate the quad, I just left it facing towards that beacon, which is sort of north-west uh, of here. So they were just pickups uh, from the side or the back or wherever the signals were coming from. And here is Mount Martha on the vertical, it's about S9, and picking it up just at about S1 or 2. Now that'll be also on the other side of the quad, 90 degrees off beam. So here's Mount Martha. What I've done, I've turned the quad where I think it is. It's, uh, I'm just turning it by hand at the moment. I, I really don't have much of an idea. That's the uh, quad. That's the vertical, S9. And the quad is about S6. So that's the difference. The beam, uh, the quad's fairly directional. Um, not sure how wide it is, but it, uh, it is definitely directional. So here's an interesting one. Mount Tassie on the vertical. I've now turned the quad so that it points towards Mount Tassie, thereabouts. That's on the vertical. And that's on the quad. So we're looking at uh, on the quad, it says 40 over 9. On the vertical, it says 60 over 9. I'll just put in some uh, receive attenuation so we get the signal down a bit. That's on the vertical, S40. And that's on the quad, between S9 and S, so say, 9 plus 10. They're looking at about 30 dB. So that's with the quad facing Mount Tassie versus the vertical. And that's probably the most realistic test between the two polarizations.